Now we have everything in place to define our first polynomial division algorithm. This polynomial division algorithm will formalize what we have done at the beginning of the lecture, which was an ad hoc version of how a polynomial division should work. This will not be the end result, this is our first attempt, and this will form the foundation upon which we will then finalize our polynomial division algorithm later on. Of course, it will pay to first take a careful look at univariate polynomial division, so let's do this. So this will be a page out of our middle school training. So let's take something easy. I'm just going to take a sum of uh, monomials x to the 4 plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1. And this is the polynomial that I want to divide. And I'm going to divide it by, let's say, the following, x squared plus 1. So there are slightly different notations across the world. I'm going to use the following. And anyway, it's, it's not super hard to translate whatever notation you like. I'm going to divide this here by that here. And the way it works, if you remember, is that I'm going to first look at the leading term here. So there's a clear ordering by degrees here. Uh, and I'm going to look at the leading term here. The thing is, x to the 4 is divisible by x squared. And I perform this division. x to the 4 divided by x squared is going to give me x squared. I write x squared here. And now I multiply x squared with the polynomial that I'm dividing by. This is x squared plus 1. I get x to the 4 plus x squared. And now I subtract. So this gives me x cubed plus x plus 1. And now this process we just repeat. Now the remainder is x cubed plus whatever. And I just need to look at x cubed and I divide it by x squared again. So x cubed divided by x squared is x. So that's what I'm going to add to my quotient here. And then, and then I multiply x with x squared plus 1. And then I subtract the result once again. So this gives me 1. At this point, something new happens. The leading term is 1. And 1 is not divisible by x squared. And then we declare that this 1 is the remainder and we terminate the algorithm. So the upshot here is that x to the 4 plus all this is the quotient x squared plus x times the polynomial I was dividing by plus the remainder. So I went through this uh, trivial calculation quite laboriously because well, pretty much the words that I've used I will use once again when doing multivariate polynomial division. But the important thing is the multivariate polynomial division will have an extra step here that did not really appear here, so it wasn't very clear. Well, the moment we hit an indivisible term, the algorithm stopped. What we are going to do uh, in the multivariate polynomial case is that there will be an extra step that reinitiates the inductive uh, loop. So now let's do uh, the algorithm in the multivariate division case, essentially just doing what seems reasonable, and then we will formalize it afterwards. So this time I take the following polynomial. I set up my division problem as before. So I'm dividing the polynomial x squared y plus xy squared plus y squared. But as we discussed before, it makes sense to consider division by multiple polynomials now. That's what's interesting here. So I'm dividing this time by y squared minus 1 and xy minus 1. And of course, I will also form two quotients at once. What's important is that I will respect the order of the dividing polynomials. So the y squared minus 1 will be my preferred reduction uh, operation, and then I will reduce by x y minus 1 when it's not possible to reduce by y squared minus 1. So we continue with what seems reasonable. We take x squared y, and here uh, I'm using the lexicographic ordering to order the monomials. That's how I've written this uh, polynomial. So maybe I make a note of this. And with lex ordering, the leading coefficient is x squared y, the leading coefficient here is y squared, but y squared does not divide x squared y, therefore I say that there is no quotient here. The first thing I write is 0, 
So I did not write the zeros before, but let's write it here because I want to emphasize that I have two quotients. I now move on to the second polynomial, xy minus 1, and xy does divide x squared y. x squared y divided by xy is x. And now I write this over here. So I, my second quotient term uh, accumulated an x. This time I do what I did before. x times xy minus 1 goes here. And then I subtract uh, it from the first polynomial that I started with. So I get, uh, now using the Lex ordering, I write it as x y squared plus x plus y squared. And now our algorithm begins anew. I start again by looking at the first polynomial. Its leading term y squared does in fact divide the leading term x y squared. So I continue with this division. Dividing x y squared by y squared gives me x. I write it here. And just for bookkeeping I write 0 at the bottom. So the second quotient doesn't appear here. The first quotient was x. And now I just uh, continue as before. x times the first polynomial is xy squared minus x. I write it here. And then I perform this subtraction. I get 2x plus y squared. And here is the first time that something is different from the univariate polynomial division in a significant way. The leading term 2x is not divisible by either y squared or xy. So in the univariate case, this, is, was, the, this was the time to stop not this time around. What we do is that we open a remainders column. So I carry 2x to the remainders column. If you really want to behave like an accountant, you can in fact put this 2x over here so that we cancel. So I, the, the price of putting 2x here is to subtract it here and I am left with y squared. Now what happens is that the new leading term y squared is in fact divisible by the y squared here and so I just continue with my loop again I, by trying to divide by these leading terms. This time y squared divided by this y squared is 1 and again I add nothing here and just continue y squared minus 1 times 1 is y squared minus 1 and the difference is just 1. Well now just to make it uh, symmetric I'm going to take this one column to the remainders again because one is not divisible by y squared or xy. And now I finally reach zero. And that's when the algorithm terminates. The moment your original polynomial after all these subtractions reaches zero, the algorithm terminates. And we can now gather uh, our quotients and remainders to write our answer in a legible format. So let's squeeze our answer to the right hand side over here. So I had x squared y plus x y squared plus y squared. This thing equals the first quotient times the first polynomial. So that's x plus 1 times y squared minus 1 plus the second quotient which was x times the second polynomial x y minus 1 and plus the remainder, the sum of the remaining terms. This was 2x plus 1. So what you can observe right now is that none of the monomials in my remaining term is divisible by the leading terms of my dividing polynomials. So these were y squared and xy, they don't divide any of the monomials. And also the quotients are relatively small in that the leading, every term in the quotient and the term in the uh, dividing polynomials, they're all smaller or equal to the terms appearing inside of the, the polynomial to be divided. Okay, so let's formalize what we've been just doing rather intuitively. Uh, so I'm going to give the pseudocode for the multivariate division algorithm as we have discussed so far. So what you're giving me is a polynomial f, which I'm supposed to divide, and I'm dividing by g1 through ga, and they're all polynomials with coefficients in some field at k and in some variables n. What's important is that this polynomial ring should already be equipped by some monomial ordering. As output, I'm going to give you the remainder r, the quotients q1 through qa, and these, uh, this output will have the following properties. 
So no monomial appearing in R should be divisible by the leading terms of the GIs. And we don't introduce unnecessary uh, quotient terms. So I don't want uh, to take uh, redundant cancellations between the GIs so that we can formalize by saying that the leading terms of QI times GI should be always less than or equal to the leading term of F. Let's initialize the variables before we enter into this loop of our algorithm. So I'm setting P to be my F. So this P corresponds to my left column where I was constantly reducing things from F. So that's going to be kept track of by P. And then I have to set my R Q1 through QA to be zero. So here dot equals, I just mean uh, set these variables to be zero. And semicolon I use as in magma to start a new instruction. The other thing I need to keep track of was while I was performing my division, I was keeping track of uh, which polynomial I was currently reducing by. So if I was at the first polynomial and there was no reduction, I'd have to move into the second polynomial. So I'm going to create the index i to keep track of this. During execution, i will have to be between 1 and a and I initialize it at zero, you'll see the first thing I'll do will be to increment it. And I will use GIs. Okay, now we can start the body of the algorithm. I say that while P is non-zero, do the following. And when I exi exit this while loop, the algorithm will be complete. So the first thing I do is to increment I. So I, first we start with zero, so it will be one the first time I enter into this loop and I check whether the leading term of GI divides the leading term of P. And then I update my ith quotient, QI. By precisely this division. And I need to update P. So I subtract from P this division term times GI. So the result of this operation will be to kill the leading term of P, therefore I will be left with a P with a smaller leading term. And one more thing, whenever we did such a reduction, we reset our counter I, so that for the new P, we're going to start dividing with G1 again. So I set I to be zero. Now what can happen is that maybe I never enter into this if clause, I gets to A here, and I do a division, and even the GA does not have a leading term that divides the leading term of P, then I will not reset my counter and I will find myself at a position where I equals A. And now I don't want to increment the counter again because then GA plus one does not exist. So what I need to do is to remove the leading term of P, which was not divisible by anything and put it into the remainders. So this mimics then the remainder column. We remove this leading term. Uh, we have to reset the counter again. And that's it. So once you repeat this loop again and again, you will always remove uh, the leading term of P. And since uh, P has finitely many monomials, after each reduction, we will decrease the number of monomials appearing in P. Eventually, there's nothing left. P is zero. So this is when you exit the loop and you return the updated values of R Q1, Q2, etc. up to QA. So I've written this code here in a pseudocode. So I, I'm not necessarily using Magma syntax, although it looks very much like it because Magma uh, follows this pseudocode syntax. So I did not write end if here or end while. I just used um, indentation to show you that this if clause here is over, so I start a new if clause, that kind of thing. So it will be a good exercise at this point to write your own a division algorithm, let's say in Magma or whatever software you prefer. Uh, so you'll have to learn about how to get the leading terms, how to put a monomial ordering, that kind of thing. I should uh, end this section 
with a couple of warnings. So the first thing is something we've uh, essentially observed already at the very beginning of the lecture, but this is also true for the first multivariate division I presented uh, just a few minutes ago. If you change the order of the GIs, then the remainder may also change. I'm not even mentioning the fact that monomial ordering will also change your remainder. That's now given, so that I have to take my polynomials uh, and my polynomial rings with a monomial ordering structure given to them. And here is the really problematic part, and it's this, that the remainder can be non-zero even when f belongs to the ideal generated by g1 through ga. And this was the example that we did when we were demonstrating the problem of uh, multivariate division some while back. And we simply cannot resolve this problem if we do this kind of division by any given basis. And indeed, this was the outstanding open problem up until the 1960s. People did not know whether you could do division properly, so to speak, so that you could check, for instance, uh, ideal membership and to compute sort of well-defined canonical residues. So if your f belongs into the ideal, but r is not zero, then clearly this is not a canonical residue. So the next developments that we have to do would have to be about setting things up properly and understanding what kind of an ideal basis we have to choose, so that once you perform this ideal division algorithm, you will be able to compute a canonical residue, one which is zero precisely when f belongs to the uh, ideal. So this will take a while to develop, and I'll see you in the next section where we start this development.